Brad Pitt opened up a couple years ago about suffering from face blindness or prosope agnosia. This is a condition where the brain doesn't perceive or recognize faces or facial expressions. In some cases, they don't even recognize themselves in the mirror. And looking into this, it's estimated up to 2.5% of the world's population may suffer from this condition. That's up to 10 million people in the United States alone. So what are the details about face blindness? Let's focus in. So I recently read this book, Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, where the husband in the story does suffer from prosopagnosia or face blindness, and it kind of drives this crazy story. But this is what inspired me to do this video, especially when I found out that a lot more people may suffer from this than I initially thought. Breaking down the word prosopagnosia, nosia means no or to know, a is not, so not knowing, and prosop is face, so not knowing a face or face blindness. And the person who suffers from this may have perfect vision. 20-20 vision may not even need glasses to see correctly. All of this happens in the brain, the visual processing and understanding. And to break down this process, visual information and electrical signals starts with the eye. The retina goes to the optic nerve. The optic nerve sends it back through the optic chiasm and eventually to the back of the brain, the occipital cortex. That information that gets sent away to other parts where it can be ultimately understood and processed and eventually constructed as vision. And this information is sent out into two streams. There's the dorsal stream that kind of processes where or spatial recognition and the ventral stream that processes what or what we are looking at. And that ventral stream goes into the inferior occipital lobe or the fusiform gyrus and that's where facial recognition happens. The occipital lobe talks directly to the temporal lobe and they kind of communicate and figure out what they're looking at. And this is the area, if it's either damaged or isn't developed correctly, the inferior occipital lobe, then that's what can cause face blindness or prosopagnosia. Now, if there's damage, there's usually a lesion on this inferior occipital lobe and usually it's bilateral, meaning it's on both sides of the brain. It can be unilateral and if it is, it's usually just on the right side of the brain and this might correlate with a left visual field blind spot. This type of visual restriction is called a left homonymous hemonopsia. And this is something doctors probably should remember if someone comes in with that specific type of complaint saying, hey, I'm not really recognizing faces, something's going on. And we do a visual field test and find out that they have a complete homonymous visual field defect, then it could be face blindness or prosopagnosia. Now for the longest time, it was believed that face blindness was acquired, meaning that you acquired this condition through brain damage or lesions on that occipital lobe. And here's a list of all possible causes that could do that. Now we know it can also be congenital or you could be born with this condition and it's called developmental prosopagnosia, where that portion of the brain didn't develop correctly, whether it's from DNA mutations or possibly genetic contributions. So what does someone from prosopagnosia actually see if they're looking at someone's face? Now they break prosopagnosia down into two different categories. The first one being aperceptive. Now this person can't even perceive the face. They can't perceive facial expressions or what they're looking at. It's a problem with perception. So when this person's looking at a face, sometimes they can't even tell the parts of the face and they can't register if that person is showing sadness or happiness or excitement or anything like that. They cannot perceive or register what that person is feeling or any nonverbal cues that person might be giving off. And the second category is associative. This is a problem with recognition. A person can see the face, can recognize facial figures and parts of the face, probably see nonverbal cues, but can't recognize the face. Meaning if you had a lineup of faces and faces that they've seen before, even if it's familiar to them, they don't recognize whose face that is. They can see the face and know that it's a face, but they don't recognize whose face that is. Now in these conditions, if this person hears them talk or sees how this person walks, then a lot of times they can instantly know who this person is because they recognize them through those features. And there's even a more special type of prosopagnosia where the person doesn't recognize their own face. They, they know that they're looking in a mirror, they know that they're looking at themselves and, and looking at the image, but they just don't 
recognize the face. They can't distinguish and remember the facial features, their own facial features. And this is called mirror image agnosia. So there's a few things I wanted to add here. Prosopagnosia is considered a difficult condition to diagnose just because there is a large range of facial recognition skills. Some people are very talented and some people just have poor recognition skills and not necessarily have prosopagnosia. And this is where Brad Pitt comes in. Now he's never officially been diagnosed with it. He plans on having testing, but never officially been diagnosed. Now when it comes to testing, there's actually a lot of tests that people get ran through in order to officially diagnose them with prosopagnosia. This can definitely involve vision testing, visual field testing to make sure there's no other visual problems going on, memory testing, facial recognition skills testing, and also imaging testing, MRIs, CAT scans. And usually this is a condition that's considered permanent. It doesn't usually resolve. There are cases where if you get prosopagnosia, maybe from a stroke or something else along those lines, there is a chance that it can resolve and your facial recognition skills will come back but usually it's considered a permanent condition with no treatment or remedy, at least not at this time. And if you wanna learn more about this, I'll put links in the comments with additional resources and information. And if you yourself or you know someone who struggles with face blindness, leave it in the comments. Again, it was more people than I thought when I started looking into this. Um, did, did you read this book? I'm just kinda of curious what you thought about it. You can leave that in the comments too. Stay focused.